Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship, and we welcome our online guests as well. Following worship today, there's some snacks downstairs, coffee uh, will be ready, and we're in the third week of a six-part series from Timothy uh, Keller, uh, and the uh, series is called The Reason for God, Conversations on Faith and Life. Especially helpful if you're having conversations with people in your circle of influence on how to speak to people who uh, are wondering about Jesus or simply far from him. And then in uh, middle school and high school, we've got a six-part series, The Purpose Driven Life. Paul and Karen will lead that again today. And there's Sunday school for children up to uh, fifth grade. So we'd love for you to stick around with us if you're able. Our last uh, midweek Wednesday service is uh, here at 6.30 this week. And we've had a a good time inviting uh, Hope to join us. And uh, the following week is Holy Week already, which is a reminder, if you've not signed up, to worship that day. We're simply trying to have folks RSVP so we can create enough space so it's safe. Um, Unfortunately, COVID cases are up another 8% over the the week, so we have to remain vigilant. And uh, if you would, send an email to Cheryl or to me. Um, Don't tell me today because I'll have 10 other things there. Make me forget, but uh, contact us, call the office, and we'll get you on there. It's at 9.30 and 11 on Easter. Just let us uh, make sure we have your last name if it's an email and how many seats you want to reserve. Vacation Bible School, if you would mark your calendar so you can let others know, or if you're able to volunteer with us, those dates are June 28th through 30th, uh, three days, and it'll be a great time with Camp Perkins again this year. We will share communion today as Jesus joins himself to us with his body and blood And that is a a meal, a family meal, for those who have been baptized into Christ's death and into his life. And if you have any questions around that, glad to to share that with you. Um, But it's a meal we rejoice to to, uh, share together. As we uh, turn to the gospel, last week we heard from the Apostle John and the Apostle Paul, and they shared the before and after work of Jesus work that illumines our darkness, illumines the darkness of this world with God's light. And today we turn to the gospel lesson again. Jesus' disciples, we his followers, are called to a hard path following Jesus. It's a call to downward mobility. And I know what you're thinking, don't leave yet. There's gospel in the message. So... (laughs) See him kind of getting ready to get up and go. Um, With that, I invite you to stand as we share in our invocation. These words were placed upon you when you were baptized in God's promises. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We remain standing and sing together great in power. Praise Him, you angels in heaven
you may be seated as we turn our hearts in a time of confession. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. We pause now for a private time of reflection and self-examination. Let us then together confess our sins to God our Father, most merciful God. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. I invite you to stand with me for the words of absolution. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Almighty God, by your great goodness mercifully, look upon your people, that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Together we pray, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Amen. We remain standing to sing. To the depths of the sea, creations revealing your majesty. From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring, every creature unique in the song that it sings. But where it should go Or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow Who imagine the sun and give source to its light Yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night None can fathom Indescribable, uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. All powerful, untamable, all struck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing. 
seated as God comes to us in his holy word today. Ben, thanks for bringing this word to us. Indescribable, amazing God. Put the stars in the heavens, but knows you by name as well. You're, you're welcome to come up. Uh, he is the one who's revealed himself in the word shared now. Thanks, Ben. The first reading is from the 31st chapter of Jeremiah, beginning at the 31st verse. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the fifth chapter of Hebrews, beginning at the first verse. For every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this, he is obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins, just as he does for those of the people. And no one takes this honor for himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications, with loud cries and tears, to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him, being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand together in honor of the Holy Gospel, which comes from the 10th chapter of Mark. Verses 32 through 45. And they were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. And they were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. And taking the twelve again, he began to tell them what was to happen to him, saying, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles. And they will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. And after three days he will rise. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. And their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be among you. 
but whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Uh, before we have our song, a reminder about our offering. It will be collected as you exit the worship center today. Simply don't want to pass the plate hand to hand. But thanks for joining in that mission as we, we follow Jesus and connect people to him that they may follow and be his disciples as well. While we stand, we sing together, Be Thou My Vision. mercy, and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. So we turn to our gospel lesson today as Jesus is headed toward Jerusalem. The twelve are on the path with him and many others who follow him. And we hear about this strange way of downward mobility and it strikes us as odd. I think we're uh, surprised by John and James' actions. But we're not surprised 
by that idea of upward mobility, we are very familiar with that. It's a part of our culture. And we raise our kids, and we tell them, someday you're going to have to ask for a raise. Someday you're going to have to look someone in the eye and seek out the next position. We're familiar with upward mobility. It's not always pretty. The boss, the man or woman who just heaps on the stress load on his or her workers ends up getting an advancement and the workers left behind in the same position are worn out. But we get it. Upward mobility. The coach amongst us who uh, loves his, his son and uh, the kids on his team, he's an elder at church and he's well um, in the community and helps it. And the family packs up and moves. There's another opportunity. And we get it. We miss them. But we get it. Upward mobility. Lori and I, um, at one point, this was about, mm, we were talking this morning, 1997. Lori had a high-stress job in San Diego. Uh, great pay, great benefits, but very stressful. But she always had this dream of being a flight attendant. So she began to interview and send out resumes, and it, it didn't look promising. And then she got a call back from Southwest, which was nice because the company at the time was one that was highly ranked for employees, great benefits, um, family could fly uh, at will, have to wait in line, but you can fly, um, family benefits, and an atmosphere that was highly ranked in the uh, top 500 companies in America. And so she was invited to uh, immersive training, and she had a manual, and we got flashcards, and we quizzed her, and it was going to be just quick but intense um, training. Got the job. Pretty nice. We live in San Diego, and uh, her hub was in Phoenix. And you can deadhead. You can take a flight. It doesn't cost the worker anything. Get to Phoenix, start your week. And then, same thing, come at home. Problem is, in time, that hub moved to Baltimore. And now it was an all-day trip to get to work. Sometimes an all-day trip to get home. There were times when she was away, and not often, but sometimes six days out of the week. And when she started the job, uh, our youngest was almost out of diapers, and the other was just into kindergarten, first grade. And so when you're gone that long, the elasticity of your relationships gets not so elastic anymore. It becomes hard between husband and wife and mom and sons, between friends that you leave back home and church members because you're just not together. I don't think a family could get as close to losing our we, our togetherness, than we did. But I thank God that Lori chose after five years, and not five years of struggle, but after five years, she valued her family over the work. And she gave that up. It was a loving thing, and all of us have benefited amazingly by that loving act. But what we thought was the big dream and the step forward eh, is more like a dream that crashes and burns. And sometimes the way we design life does that as well. We're very familiar with the idea of upward mobility. We get that part of James and John. This is the third time in Mark's gospel that Jesus will say very clearly, I will go to Jerusalem and they will kill me there. And we're kind of startled by these followers and yet, we shouldn't be, because they thought, they're human thoughts, and Jesus was speaking to them of God's thinking. You remember the first time Peter rebukes Jesus, right? No, Lord, this cannot happen to you. And remember Jesus' response? Get behind me, Satan. You, you are in the way of God's plan. That was startling as well, wasn't it? 
The second time it was James and John again, the sons of thunder, and they hear of Jesus going to give his life for many, and they want positions of power. It wasn't clicking in the minds of the twelve. And now the third time, what a startling request. Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. Wow. Um, Kind of a blank check there, right? Jesus says, what exactly do you want? Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. We want the positions of power. We want to be together too. One on your right and one on your left. And Jesus has just spoken to them very clearly that he'll be tortured and put to death. It's interesting, as Jesus says these words, how it doesn't connect. And maybe it's hard for us to understand as well. Because he says, we're going to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man, he'll be delivered over to what? The scribes and Pharisees. They'll condemn him to death. That doesn't sound like upward mobility. (laughs) That's not the top position, a condemned person. They'll deliver him to Gentiles, to hands of foreigners. They'll mock and spit at him. He'll be flogged and killed. That doesn't sound like the ladder we want to climb. He says, but my father will raise me again after three days. But in God's economy, Jesus who hung on the cross, that was a place of glory. For him. It seems like the bottom rung to us, but he was fulfilling his father's plan for humanity, a redemptive plan to purchase back you and all others far from God, that we would become children of God, forgiven and made right with our heavenly father. So when he says, I'll be delivered over and condemned, it's a step upward for Jesus. He has a diametrically opposed view of what will happen. I'll be delivered into the hands of the Gentiles. They'll mock and spit upon me. I'll be flogged and killed. These are steps forward following his father's plan. And his father will raise him on that third day. This gospel lesson is about the strange ways of downward mobility. And it turns the world upside down. You see, as Jesus was raised on a cross and likely dropped into a hole, right? They thought they were raising him that they might take him down once and for all. But he was being raised in glory doing his father's will is at that highest rung. It's different than the way we see it. In fact, the people of his day, right? He who is hung on a cross is cursed, they read in the scriptures. They thought he was on that bottom rung. But because of his love for you and for me and for a world gone wrong, he would go to that step for us. But think about this, the sinless God-man, Jesus, fully God and fully human, gave himself for me? Because I don't love like Jesus loves. And perhaps in this list you identify a few with me. I befriend someone because I want another friend. It's reciprocal. I I care, thinking that Well, someday it'll be my turn, and when I need care, they'll provide it. Certainly, later in life, this should benefit my career, my company, my church, my family. I can serve now. I give to those who deserve it. I give to those who are grateful, and I serve them when all is in place in my life, if that day ever comes. Messy service. Ooh, there's got to be a loophole for that kind of service, and I'm going to find it. I don't want to be a part of the mess. It doesn't feel like an upward move to be a slave 
to someone else, to serve them above our own needs. But Jesus calls us to live as he demonstrated and modeled so well. The truth is, in this life, we won't get it perfect. But the times we failed, he was raised on that cross to forgive us. That today and tomorrow we try again, and when we fail, there is full forgiveness, like our readings shared eloquently today. This one raised on the cross, and it looked like the very bottom rung of humanity to us, hanging on a cross, hung between criminals, didn't look like the top floor, did it? Of him, Jesus, or Paul writes, he who is the blessed and only sovereign, the king of kings and lord of lords, enthroned on a cross for you and for me, that we would be made right once and for all. That is love that God has for you. Love that he has for our world. That king of the universe who would go to what we believe is the bottom rung, said, for even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. No one else has ever deserved to be lauded and worshipped and honored like Jesus. But he didn't come seeking that. He came giving himself a servant, putting all others before his self. Yet, we don't get it perfectly, but we see it sometimes among us, don't we? Where the love we've received in Jesus, we share it in our homes, and we share it in our church and in our community. The daughter who puts the dream job on hold to care for her aging mom. I don't need that right yet. The career worker who opts to serve two small congregations, who gives up a corporate job with amazing benefits and takes on far less pay and probably twice the work, is trying to love like Jesus. The dad who passes up more responsibility at work so his kids can have more of him at home. The family that passes on the move because People are finally coming to their church and coming to know Jesus, and they want to be a part of what God is doing here and now. And I see some of you on Facebook putting out there, message me. If there's a need, this will be private. Tell me what you need. I'll bring it to your doorstep. I've seen you do that. You're being like Jesus. You're putting the needs of others before you they would experience God's love in your actions. Yes, we're indicted, uh, invited, indicted, I like that, invited. There's a sermon there probably, as uh, Jesus was condemned. But anyway, invited to follow in the strange ways of downward mobility. And a wonderful phrase from, um, from St. Paul in 2 Corinthians 4.10, speaking of followers, we always carry in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. Today, as you go backward to uh, the, the communion table, Jesus will join himself to you with his body and his blood. Yes, you'll receive his body through bread. You'll receive his true blood through wine. But it's a reminder that in your baptism, you were buried with Jesus. His death is yours, and we carry that in our bodies because he has taken up life within us and indwells us that we may also share his life with others. We often go to the bottom rung so that we can share his life with a world that needs it. On that cross... It looked like the bottom rung, the worst of jobs. But there God provided mercy and justice. The wages of sin 
The wages of your sin were paid in full. God has poured out mercy upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray together. If you would stand with me. Gracious God, that you would send Jesus, the king of the universe, and that he would step steadily downward, that all would be served with mercy, with undeserved favor, with forgiveness, that we would be served to be your children, to have your name placed upon us and all your promises in baptism to belong forever. Lord, those are hard steps. We ask that you would move in our hearts by your spirit within us to take those downward steps every day, to love as you love in our homes, to love as you love in our places of work, to love as you love in our friendship circles, our areas of influence. Lord, that we would step into the greater community with your love and to love like you do. Remind us every day of how deeply you love us, not once, but every day. We thank you for that love. In Jesus' name, amen. We join together now in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as uh, Todd comes forward to raise the prayers of the church. And we speak to one who, what, went to a bottom rung and loves to hear our prayers today. Thank you. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Jesus Christ and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, in these Lenten days, we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and to write your word on our hearts that we might know you as the God who forgives our iniquities and remembers our sins no more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, bless and sustain our synod president, our district president, and our pastor, and all pastors everywhere. Uh, all these are just like us and are beset with weakness. Grant them wisdom in their dealings with us and in keeping and keep them faithful in proclaiming your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son came not to be served, but to serve. Help us with our authority over one another so that we humbly serve one another in our homes, communities, and congregation, just as Christ has so humbly served each of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, uh, look in mercy on our country and our leaders to whom you have given earthly authority. Guard them from the temptation to lord this authority over us that they might faithfully serve according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you watch over and protect and defend us through the service of others. Bless 
We pray that the men and women who serve in our military, our police forces, and all emergency respond, responders uh, who serve like your son and are often called to lay down their lives for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will bless, sustain, and relieve all who suffer in our midst. We pray for those who suffer from illness, isolation, unemployment, and loss of loved ones. We bring before you, Lord, the family of Aggie Ferguson, and just pray for peace and comfort for this family on her passing this week. We ask that you lift up Rachel Pinkney, uh, Lynn and Jean Winter, uh, Randall, Deb Call's nephew, Russell Redding, John Nolan, Cammie Kinghorn, Tyler Taysom, Linnea Didi, and all who are currently suffering from health issues, asking for healing as well as guidance and wisdom for their doctors providing treatment. We pray for Mark H., for Su Suzette's brother Bernie, Ashlyn, Marcia Simon, Mark Gardner, and all who are battling cancer. Provide healing and effective treatment according to your will. We pray for our homebound and all not be all those not being with us today. Um, especially we lift up Rose Call, Yvonne Lanier, Marguerite Erickson, Shirley Maloney, Ed and Marlene Ledvina, Maxine Mikeley, and Tally Peterson. Strengthen and give peace to them as well as their caregivers and families Help us all to minister in your name to their needs that they may know the fullness of your eternal salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have baptized us with Christ's baptism to be our God, that we may be your people. Grant us faithfully to drink from his cup in the blessed sacrament that he might sustain our lives and his, with his flesh and blood. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else, Lord, that you know we need, grant us for the sake of he who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please rise and join me uh, in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Todd, for leading. We'll step into the words of institution in a moment, but a reminder that uh, communion will be served at the back. Uh, ushers will invite those in the overflow and those seated around the table first, and then starting at the back rows, invite you to the table. Take the, uh, the little paper packet, it has the wafer in it, and the cup of wine, and rather than eating and drinking that over the table, just move to your right from there, and we'll have a blessing on your way out. And you're welcome downstairs, again, for snacks and some community time. But we're reminded of uh, Jesus' words and what he did that Holy Week, all of Lent leading to a reminder of that. On the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. 
This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way also after the supper, again, uh, when he had given thanks for the cup, he gave it to them saying, drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for the remission, the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We'll share the post-communion blessing, the benediction, and the sending. And then uh, you can, we have some music for you to listen to um, while you wait for communion. The post-communion blessing, may this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you, steadfast in the true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Jesus is active in our world. Go and join him. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Jealous for me, loves like a hurricane. I am the tree bending the knee, the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am aware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory, I realize just. 